One of the most famous trials in America took place here in the small town of Dayton, Tennessee, in 1925. According to the modern legend of the Scopes Monkey Trial, local teacher John Scopes was brought to trial by a group of Bible-thumping fundamentalists because he taught the theory of evolution to his high school class. In doing this, he was breaking a Tennessee state law. In the trial that followed, Scopes was vindicated and the Bible thumpers were made to look stupid. That's the legend that everyone knows. In 1960, it was turned into a Hollywood blockbuster called Inherit the Wind. But, like the story of the trial of Galileo, it isn't what actually happened. The reality was more complicated. This story is more complex than the legend. The legend is, is great for, um, for theatre, and it made good theatre in Inherit the Wind. Um, it's good for journalistic stories, but even at the time, people knew the event was different, but were casting it in a way that would, would make headlines, and it did make headlines. It was, it was a very highly publicized event. The intent was to be a good business opportunity. They thought that they would attract new jobs, business to the town, because they would get it on the front page. And the 1920s, much like today, were a period of celebrity journalism. And celebrities were becoming sports stars or, or other movie stars, um, were becoming national celebrities. And so this was a time, much like today, where you, know, you watch those reality TV shows today and it doesn't matter whether you get, um, whether you get what appears to be good publicity or bad publicity, either sort of publicity gets you money, gets you jobs. And that was the thought that they had in, um, in Dayton. They also thought it'd be a fun event. It was scheduled for the summer. The news media would come. It was a carnival atmosphere. There were booze, there were, there were rides, there were, there were ox roast, um, um, plenty of places to get food or other items. There were trained monkeys that performed. It was an, it was an event. It was like a carnival uh, for this summer. And that day, people always liked diversions. What do they talk about? Bread and circuses in diversions in Rome. It was a, it was a diversion. Um, the one thing that didn't play out exactly as the town expected was the town had never viewed it as an adversarial event. That is, Scopes was never threatened to lose his job, he was never threatened to jail, he was never jeered, he was, he was a part of the community. Um, but the media twisted the story a bit. And the story is better if you create more tension. So the story that got reported, now there's a mixture of reports, but the the basic tone of the reports made the town look more hostile than it really was. Made it look like here they were actually prosecuting one of their teachers for teaching evolution. Well, everyone knew he'd never taught evolution. He wasn't a biology teacher. Um, he was just challenging whether the law was constitutional or beyond constitutional, a good law, a just law. And so they gave it, that gave it a somewhat darker edge in the sense that here was this town attacking one of its own the media played into that. Certainly the northern media did, and the urban media did. And the urban media and the media in the north portrayed this as southern and a small town. And look what these small town southern hicks, the same people that are lynching black people, are now lynching school teachers for teaching evolution. And that made it a better story that was a story that resonated in the, in the mindset, especially in places like New York or Chicago or, or San Francisco or Boston, and was picked up on. But that, wasn't, that didn't have any real basis. The Scopes trial started out as a publicity stunt by local businessmen. It went wrong when the national media seized on it and the story spun out of control. Next time, we'll look at the major players in the trial.